What's going on, everybody, and welcome to The Shoehorn, a sneaker show unlike any other. I'm your host, TJ Void, and first of all, I want to thank you for checking out the first episode. We really appreciate you viewing it. I personally appreciate all the comments and all the feedback, and now that we've exchanged pleasantries, let's get started with episode two of The Shoehorn. So last night, during the BT Awards, Chris Brown and his entire dancing entourage all rocked the Reebok Shagnosis. Now, as we know, they're coming back out next week uh, to a lot of fanfare, actually. But the crazy thing about that is when they first came out back in the mid-90s, they were extremely polarizing. Many people didn't like them at all. Uh, it was too flashy, they were too bulky, they were too big. Uh, they couldn't see themselves wearing Shaq shoes because Shaq was a huge person. But now that they're coming in in a classic form, everybody loves them. And it's just kind of odd how that happened. In fact, I knew only one girl that had the Reebok Shaq notes in my entire school. Now I had a crush on her, which may explain a lot, but that's neither here nor there. The point is that they're coming back and it blew up now that Chris Brown showed kind of how they look on foot. So you let me know why are they so sought after now. Is it because of the times? Is it because of the style has changed? I don't, I don't know, but it's crazy how some shoes that weren't really popular when they first came out are now considered classics. Transitioning from something old that's returning in a new form to something brand new, the Nike KD6. Nike and Kevin Durant got together and had a nice event out in his hometown where they visited a lot of the places that were actually inspirations for the different colorways of the shoe that Kevin Durant previewed via his Instagram. We had the bamboo, uh, the green color, we had the Sea Pleasant, uh, we had uh, the DC Free Supremes that actually released. I mean, every, every shoe seemed to have a, a nice story behind it, which is fine. Uh, it's a huge difference from the sky high build of the KD5 to the low cut of the KD6, but nothing seems to have caught on like the KD4. Um, maybe all the colorways is kind of trying to build your anticipation. Uh, is it working? Uh, you tell me. But then right in the middle of the event, Durant shows us the NSW version. Now listen, I, when I first saw it, I said, okay, maybe I need to see more. And then I saw more. And I decided, man, I don't need to see any more. <laughs> I've seen enough. I, listen, the, the good thing about the shoe, the good thing about the shoe game is that if you don't like it, you don't have to buy it. But uh, the double, the two layer tongue is a little much for me. The high build is a little much for me personally. But some people like it, and that's fine. That's the beautiful thing about the shoe game. Because if you don't buy it, Somebody will. There's somebody out there that thinks, oh, this is ugly, but I can make it look fresh, though. Fine, do your thing. I'm not upset with you. When you see it, you don't have to bash it. Don't bash, just scroll past. Plus, there'll be another shoe next week to come out that you can buy. Speaking of shoes coming out, we finally got a preview of the Air Jordan Fear Pack. And unlike most Jordan packs, this isn't really getting a lot of fanfare. Um, is it because there's just too many shoes coming out? Is it due to you not being able to connect the pack name to the theme of it? The color scheme is off. Uh, what is it? What, what is it about the pack that you all aren't really liking about it? Is it too early to really have any anticipation for it? I want to know. Speaking of packs, there is a Nike Air Max Camel pack that was shown. Now, to me, this was executed flawlessly. Even though we all know camouflage has been beat to death, resurrected, beat to death again, put on hats, shirts, pants, socks, shorts, whatever. It's on shoes, and this was one of the ones that was done well, was done tastefully, um, it has a nice theme to it that you can connect to, and you guys like that. I think that, you tell me, maybe it's that you can connect the theme to the colorway that makes you really like a package of shoes. Also, you may like it because you ain't gonna be able to find it. It's, you're gonna be, it's gonna be so hard to get this Air Max collection that is gonna be hyped over, so be ready for that. So we finally get to a subject that a lot of you wanted me to talk about in episode one. It's a controversial topic for sure. It's the topic of hype beast. I mean, did you really think I would let you get through episode two without saying something about it? No, sir. Or ma'am, we're not sexist here on the shoehorn. So, according to your definition, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take a little bit of a, uh, we'll call it the hype beast pop quiz where we use your definition to see if you are indeed a hype beast. So, I want you to do this. Run through this little checklist for me. One, can you go in your closet right now and pull out at least two or three pair of shoes that you know at least five to 10 people with? Have you ever stood in line for a sneaker? Have you ever stayed up late and or got up early to be 
either in line for a sneaker in the beautiful days of the midnight release or been online camped out for a sneaker. Have you ever bought from a reseller and known that you paid more than what the sneaker actually cost? According to your definition, you're a hype beast. But here's the thing, it's okay. We're all guilty of these things. Everybody who says they have a passion for sneakers has done one or more. I have done more than one of those things. And that's fine, that is not what makes you a hype beast. A shoe is popular because a lot of people like it. So you cannot be accused of being a hype beast if you really like something that everybody likes anyway. That's cool, you don't have to try to be different. Just do what you do. That is different enough. But also, if you are one of these quote unquote hype beasts that people cry about, you have the upper hand. You get to win arguments with, if you have a girl, or if you have a man, because we're not sexual here on the shoehorn, you win arguments. Let me, get, let me paint a scenario for you. Let's say, uh, fellas, you are the sneakerhead of the two in your relationship. She wants to know, hey, what are you doing? You say, I'm at the store about to get these kicks. Uh, she says, well, you have enough kicks. Why do you need any more? And you say, well, you have enough purses. Why do you need any more of those? And she says, I need purses to match different outfits. And you say, exactly. Smirky monkey. Because you win. You win that argument. Ladies, if you are the sneakerhead in the couple, he texts you. Where are you? You say, I'm at the store, about to buy these sneakers. I'll be home soon. He says, you got more kicks than I do. You don't need any more. You reply, you have more PlayStation games than I do. You don't need any more of those. Smirk emoji, because you win. So whenever you get your new shoes and you take a picture of them and you post them on different social outlets and salty social media thug number one wants to get on your neck, first of all, he or she is salty because they didn't get the shoe that you have. More than likely, they wanted it as well. So now they're just claiming you're a hype beast because they're upset. But you don't respond, you don't react, you simply reply, smirk emoji, because you win. So we reached the segment of the show, the comment corner, where we scroll through the multiple social media fronts that we have, our Twitter, our Facebook, our Instagram, as well as comments on our YouTube videos, and on our site to see which comments catch our eye. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. So looking under episode one of The Shoehorn, I came across this gem, absolute gem of a quote. And I read. Remember, I don't edit these. I read exactly how they're written. I personally don't like Yeezy, but because everybody wears them, I got them. STFU, I'm no hype beast. So I found this comment on Instagram that can put it better than I can. Uh, he says, you vote him over Nate because Nate has just J's. Only thing he wore other than J's was Yeezy's, which was for a quarter. It was more to the competition than just J's. Derek over Nate because of variety and shock value on a nightly basis. Hell, Nate didn't even play second. Monte Ellis has more uh, heat than Nate, and I'm a fan of Nate. Let's be sneakerheads people, not just Jordan lovers. Well put, well put. But let's let's talk about Jays. If we do want to talk about Jays, Derek Williams wore Jordans that you probably forgot about. He wore oxidized 14s. I'm sure you forgot about those. Redwood 14. I'm sure you forgot about those. And and the Oregon fours. Now I'm sure you know personally know more than one person with a pair of Yeezys. How many people do you personally know with a pair of Oregon fours? None. I can tell you don't know any. And he wore them the entire game, not just one quarter. Son wore shoes from 1995. Most of you weren't even born in 1995. And he pulling out shoes from there. You wanna talk about foam? He wore Dr. Doom foam. Research, people. It's important to know your sneakers. And this is why he won. Derek Williams, Kicks on Court champion, to me, wasn't even close. So we've come to the end of episode two of The Shoehorn. Thank you for watching. Please, please, please give us your comments, give us your feedback, get involved, hit us on Twitter. Make sure you use the hashtag shoehorn. That's hashtag shoehorn on all of your comments, on everything on Instagram as well. Thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe to the Nice Kicks channel so you can get every episode of the shoehorn as well as other Nice Kicks video. I'm your host, TJ Void, and listen, 
I'm not here to offend anybody, but if the shoe fits, Instagram it. We out.